Dr. Barnard, Dr. Scherzai, um, Jessica, myself, and Alex and uh, Sophia Scherzai. So if you want to stick around for Q&A, we'll be set up in a few minutes. pretty soon. If you need water, water is up here as you face the stage on your right. Free water as much as you want. Filtered water, high quality water. It's over here right next to the uh, plantbaseddiet.org tent. Right next to it. Just give your reusable water bottle to Kaylee and she will fill it up. The water is really, really good. And we still, I think we still have some fitness activities going on. Fitness is across the track over here. Fitness. There's electric car displays. You can take a ride, a test drive in an electric vehicle over there. And you guys may, if you also want to know about electric vehicles, this one over here is my car, and it's towing this huge trailer, which brought this giant screen in here today. So if you didn't know that electric cars are no longer golf carts, they can actually tow big, heavy loads. And actually, like I said, you can take a test drive in the same model I have over there. Jason Casey will... Just walk over to the other side of the tra tracks and he'll uh, take you for a test drive. Cooking demonstrations are behind us. Kid Zone still has activities. Everything's on the screen here. It keeps flipping through. You can see what's left in the last hour because we have one more hour. So if you guys are hungry before dinner, we are supposed to close out at four, but maybe we'll last a little bit longer. Maybe. If you guys are hungry, we have almost 40 food vendors lined up around here. Four zero, almost 40. So if you something you haven't tried or you want to experiment, I know one of the vendors, exhibitors, is actually a vegan seafood company, if you can believe that. Oh my God, they're out here. Okay, every kind of food you can think about is out there. So be sure you try them all. Jessica, do you have any jokes for us while we're here? Do I have jokes? Yeah. I know it's hot, but don't lose your tempo. Is the mic that was, on? That was good, yeah. <laughs> I'm or is this a daikon? That's a macrobiotic joke. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> you know, plant-based people, we like to laugh. We yeah. like to laugh. We're phyto, what's the word, Sal? Phyto, phyto-functional. I'm phyto-functional. I think I am too. Yeah, right? I think you are Automatically. too. Automatically. I love that. Sense. Neil is completely phytofunctional. Functional. Yeah, watch the uh, watch this okay. thing here. Got gotcha. on that. All right. Well, Jessica, this is your this is your 15 minutes of fame at our festival. But you already had you have plenty of it. But this is this is it for you. You might as well just take this time and try to make well, plant people laugh. Try to make plant people laugh. What did the plant say to the seed? I've been there. I don't know, I just made that up. On the spur of the moment. <laughs> Hello, sir. You've got some good sunflowers going on. He's not paying attention. Sunflowers are beautiful. Well done. Are they a late Valentine? Are you making up for having forgotten on Friday? Yes, a redhead is appreciative. That you, if you make a redhead happy, it's like making 20 blondes happy. You know what I'm saying? It's like making 60 brunettes happy, making one redhead happy. Where did the Canadians go? Back there? Yes? Where are you from? Ontario. That's a big place. I'm Canadian. I know that how big that is. What city? What? London. I have cousins in London. London's lovely. What else have we got going on here? Okay, we have some questions. Very exciting. We got a lot of questions. A oh, one person has just put on a card. Why? <laughs> that is the best question. It's completely existential. It covers everything. Why? I don't know 
why, but it's a great question. Okay, so how do we want to do this? Sal and I are the official moderators, but should we just throw out a question at a time to the table? All right, well, let's wait for the taping to finish, meaning the scotch taping. Um, so for, for those of you who were not here all day, you can see the panelists. Well, myself, Dr. Sal, Jessica, Dr. Clapper, Dr. Barnard, Marcus Watts, Dr. Scherzai, uh, Sophia and Alex Scherzai. So we will, and um, Casey Schulberg, thank you for being here. So we will read out the questions that people have put on the cards one at a time. We'll direct them to the most appropriate individual and we'll go from there. Here's the thing is apparently we have three more mics um, and they're not here yet. We just have one. So maybe one of us will give the, our mic. Why don't you start with your first question, Sal? All right. Well, the first question is about Alzheimer's. It says, my doctor says I don't need medicine for hypercholesterolemia. Should I take medication? So I think this probably one would be good for Dr. Cherizai. My doctor says I don't need medicine for hypercholesterolemia. Should I take medication in relation to Alzheimer's? So it depends on the level of cholesterol. I mean, if the cholesterol is high, and it's extremely high, um, Obviously, it's very important to dive into a whole food plant-based lifestyle as soon as possible. Uh, but then again, depending on your blood pressure, your cholesterol, and other vascular risk factors, there are times when you actually have to take that cholesterol medication. And as far as the side effects, uh, when it comes to cognition is concerned, you know, more than affecting memory, it actually affects the small blood vessels in the brain a lot, and people can have many strokes if cholesterol is not addressed as soon as possible. So regardless, it's an urgent thing to be addressed as soon as possible. Hi. Uh, okay, great, great answer. Thank you very much. Um, my ophthalmologist diagnosed me with beginning glaucoma. I'm on eye drops. When I began questioning why this was happening, I was told not, underlined, to think about diet. Nothing will change this eye problem. Do you agree? Doctors, any doctors want to address that? Let me, let me read that again. Uh, I can only speculate, and it's just 100% pure speculation. Uh, with glaucoma, the tiny, tiny little channels that uh, allow fluid that's created in the front chambers of the eye to drain out, uh, they get plugged up uh, in, in a particular, most common kind of uh, glaucoma. Uh, the question is, why does the plugging up happen? And uh, speculation would be, uh, it depends on what the person's eating. They're eating a bunch of heavy proteins and fats and inflammatory uh, molecules. Uh, you can see these microscopic little uh, canals might swell shut or clog up, etc. cetera. Um, but I, you'd have to do a study, what's the incidence of glaucoma in vegans versus the standard meat eaters there? And I don't know if those studies have been done. But I suspect there, it doesn't happen spontaneously. The body isn't capricious. It doesn't say, I'll, I'll spin up glaucoma today. You know, something's happening in that eye. And it, it probably has something to do with diet, but we haven't done the studies as far as um, plant versus animal-based diets. Next question is on the effects of tofu on, thi on the thyroid function. Yeah, I grab that. Um, researchers have, have looked at, at soy products, uh, not just tofu, but soy in general, and the effect, for the most part, they don't seem to have any effect. Um, there's one way or the other. There's um, maybe two considerations, though. The Adventist Health Study 2 didn't show that soy consumption affected men at all with regard to their thyroid, but for women, there was some suggestion that high soy intake could um, depress thyroid's function. It's the only study that I know that did, seem, that did find that. Um, the other thing is if you have hypothyroidism already and you're taking uh, thyroid replacement, anything that you eat, whether it's a hamburger or a pizza or, or soy sausage, all of that stuff is going to depress the absorption of the medication. So don't take your medication with food. Take it on an empty stomach and don't eat anything for a half hour or more after you've taken it. 
And I've actually seen this anecdotally. So in 26 years, I've actually had just two patients develop hypothyroidism from eating significant amounts of soy. But again, that's anecdotal over 26 years of experience. So it obviously doesn't happen that often, but it is a consideration if someone's eating a lot of, a lot of soy products, but obviously it doesn't happen very often. Yes, and we, and we also see the reverse where when people go from a meat-based diet to a vegan diet, that you see some cases where both hypo and hyperthyroidism seems to remit. Um, to my knowledge, there's never been a clinical trial to really put it to the test, but we've seen it enough that it sure would be a timely thing to do that kind of study. Do you ever recommend, uh, do you ever recommend progesterone cream for anyone? nutrition for a newborn baby if the mother cannot breastfeed and has had a double mastectomy. As far as, and there's no substitute for mother's milk. And uh, nowadays, in the days of the internet, uh, there, in 